that is why it's fraud. The person's over there, or this is how it happens. Let me use an example. Certain man named Colin, numbskulls. Y'all know who I call numbskulls. Numbskulls got the ID cards, or numbskulls got the list. Numbskulls got 12 DROs on call. That's his words, right? I could call 12 DROs right now. Now I'm discussing, look, who ain't voted there? Yo, 12 people ain't vote. All right, good. We got like one agent here, but he want me to send 12 people. Good. Y'all just clear them in. So they go turn up at the station. James Bond. Flash ID. <laughs> go in. Collect your ballot. X off. It's a freaking fraud. So, I don't get up. I mean, it's, it's just that simple. It's just that simple. I don't know what they, I don't know how is this is so difficult for people to understand and see. I don't know how it is. And these folks are on national television saying that these things can't happen. The private sector commission saying, no elect irregularity can happen during an election. It's like nothing wrong can happen. The EU ambassador touting and mouthing what and the PSC and the PAP are saying, oh no fraud can happen. Yo, if no fraud can happen, how can we in this place? You harping about mingo. You harp on mingo fraud. So only a certain color people could do fraud. Maybe. That is what they're trying to say. It's like these PP, the PP, you know, I ask the question. Everybody's calling on AP and UFC to respect um, the recounting, to do this and be lawful and be abiding. You know, I want to cuss. But I know I got pastor here and I know I got like a lot of. I'm a pastor, son. A shout out to my mom, my dad. I love you. I will never cuss in public, but I do cuss. I do use some language. And. Seeing how the, the, a certain section of society hold, hold the, the view that the PPP Civic could do no wrong. It's like these guys could do no wrong. These guys, you know, like they say that, you know, when a bandit, I, you know, I read and see them and they say, but oh, these are some church boys. It's like the PPP Civic are church boys. They're altar boys. And they're pastors' kids. They're, they could do no wrong. The priests. <laughs> Let me tell you something. And I do not, I do not want anybody to feel that I'm trying to turn this country upside down. Because if I if I could have done it, I would have done it. If I could have done, if I had the power to like turn this entire country on its head, believe you me, I would have done it an instant. Because some people are upside down. So it's time to put them right side up. You know, if I had the power to just flip Guyana. I would flip it. In an instant. The PPP Civic is a machinery that is geared to illegality. And if you don't believe that, something wrong with you. You bounce your head. I'm here saying. If the... And in all fairness, I could say this here. That hard PNC, and I tell people, you never see me going to the PPP Civic. The reason why I tell people that over and over again, people like questioning me and questioning my loyalty to the PNC. I quit politics before going to the PPP Civic. And the answer is very simple. And I'll tell you the answer later. But I would not go to the PPP Civic. I've never gone... Um, I was around them in the, in, the, in the beginning when I first came back from Hugh Wooding. I was at Janice Jagan's funeral. And I don't know, these guys look at you differently. And you know, German, that big strong guy, that big strong guy with him from Pleasance. Dude was like, come to me a day. He says, like, yo, James, yo, the racism in there is real. The racism in the PP Civic is real. You know, these guys are racist, you know. A man like black people, boy. 
That's in my exact words. I, I, I kid you not. I kid you not. So yo, I know, I know that man. You know, like certain people in the PP say, like you can't. I can never say these guys are racist. Doctor Gopal, I love you. Doctor Gopal, I love you, man. Robert Prasad, I always say that's my brother. I don't care who say what. Robert Prasad is my brother. That's my flesh and blood. Um, who else? Uh, who else? Who else? Uh, Dr. Mahadia, Dr. Vishwa Mahadia, respect. Uh, Dr. Vindi Prasad, respect. Uh, who else? Dr. Frank Anthony, respect. Who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, Ganga Prasad, respect. <laughs> Get that <my> boy. <laughs> so, the gossip people in PP say, like, yo. I could never like 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 say well they're they're racist God they never show me that but sir folks I can't talk for them. you know what I'm saying can't say that can't say that you know your friend <laughs> you know but the PPP Civic is a racist institution and they're geared to they're geared to this illegality when it comes to elections. Seen it. I've seen it. I breathed it in. I saw it. And I'm not I'm not gonna lie to you. You know, on everything I love. On everything I love, everything I love. They're racist. The core is racist. You know. Anna Passad, we saw Anna Passad say about hungry belly and you know that condescending thing y'all just hungry belly and you know yeah if you cook up and plantain yo that is that is the mindset when they see somebody like me it's like yo we just gotta use this we just gotta use you you know we just gotta use you okay your vote that's it use you you know so german ecf when they see it and dude come back get collect my jersey collect my up new jersey come rally with me you know it's like you see it and still you going <laughs> around around this you know so i for one when i went to, i can tell you johnny jack i never forget when i went johnny jackson funeral boy yo i was at port moran at johnny jackson's funeral you know and yo <laughs> Folks is like looking at me as if it was different. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, man. I mean, like again, I come from a place where I grew up in the Northwest. You know, I don't know nothing about this race thing and looking at people different. Like, I ain't know I black till I come to town. And I wanna, I wanna say shout out to the Northwest, man. I love all my Northwest people. You know, teacher. Sir Bowling Opposite, that was my first HM, Mabumu Primary. Then it was Teacher Yvonne Hercules. You know, shout out to Brother Jilx. You know, taught me volleyball, first sport that I love, man. So it's like I grew up in Northern and I don't even know about this race thing. And I come to town and people talking about black and Indian and this and that. Yo, <laughs> the tongue is crazy. But the institution, the PP Civic, is one. I can't be there you know I can't be there and I'm not trying again to pit anybody against the people if you want to go to people you go to people that you're all right man I respect you right you want to go with them you go with them I'm telling you don't think these guys are saints man don't think these guys are saints these guys love power these guys want power when you see certain people and see the speaking here or they speak these guys love power they want power they do anything to get power you know they have a mindset they're driven for power you know, driven for power, accumulation of wealth. They're driven for that. You know, that that's that's what they on. So they will do anything. They have to do anything. They spend like thirty million US, thirty four million US. Excuse me. They spend monies on a lobby firm. They bought all these POs, man. Like it or not, they bought them out. They bought out a lot of people. A lot of people got bought out. And you know, people are gonna come forward just now. We can start finding them just now to, to say what really happened. Now come this solo man. This solo Ghana. And Ghana lost in these elections. Not PP loss. 
no APNU loss, no PNC loss, no none of them small parties lost. They are lost in these elections. So the PP Civic had this machinery and they took advantage of areas like on the East Bank, Regions 1, East Coast, Regions 2, Regions 3, Central Branch, Regions 5, Regions 6, Regions 9. Whew. Whew. But the East Coast, hmm. you guys are not seeing half that is going to come out on the East Coast. And um, our position is you you can't have in, in, in the face of all of this a credible result and here i'm trying to be objective as objective could be you know you can never ever be you could never ever ever be satisfied with what is going on if you're Guyanese and you're a you you love guyana and you're ignoring what the pp civic done did or god you saw you you're acknowledging you you're lambasting uh, what went on in region 4 you're blaming mingo let me just say this again mingo is not the problem mingo does not tabulate the votes mingo does not count ballots forgive me mingo does not count ballots the dro's the po's they handle the ballots the po's handle the ballots then it goes to the dro's it goes into gcom system then it comes to mr mingo all right so before you get to mr mingo you have to go through a number of people you but you know all they want to do is mingo 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 that's all they want to focus on they don't want to go to all these dro's that Anil says 12 of them he could call for them phone and get them so you got to go to po's then you got to go to the DROs before it comes to the returning officer. And I gave the names of other returning officers in which a lot of shenanigans and skullduggery happened. And nobody is mentioning these ROs. Nobody. The People's Progressive Party Civic attempted to steal these elections and they got caught. And I'm going to say this to my supporters. I'm going to say this to AP and UAFC. I know it's been hard that we have not reached the end of the road as yet. But rest assured, rest assured, we will not rest until the People's Progressive Party Civic is exposed for every single thing they did you know and um, this is not about again this is nothing personal I have nothing personal against anybody from the People's Progressive Party Civic nothing personal against the party but I know that if we don't put a stop to it now in the next electoral cycle the People's Progressive Party Civic will use this very same machinery to screw with these elections. You hear what I'm telling you? They will use these this same apparatus of having migrants and stuffing ballots and having persons who are not on the list voting and dead people and everything else. They're going to use it back again and again and again. That is why I'm so happy this recount happened. And I don't... Persons ask me how we look and if we win this, if we got... I didn't even answer them questions. I didn't even care about that no more. You know, I'm just... I just wanting to see that this entire system is reformed and changed. And we could have a system that when you call an election that people who are in Guyana vote and vote once and at the end of the day those ballots are counted correctly the PP Civic won that too the good ones in the PPC y'all won that too 
That is what you all want to. That's what the people who love Guyana. The people who love Guyana will say, you know what? We don't want to see what happened with uh, with Region 4. And we don't want to see what happened with Regions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The ones who really love Guyana are going to say that. I don't want to see what happens in Regions 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The people who really love Guyana, the people who who don't love Guyana, they're going to focus, oh, we just want to see what happens in Region 4. We don't care about nothing else. Y'all love Guyana. But the real ones, the real ones who say, you know, something, something was really, something went wrong. And I'm not here. The people who jumped out and say, you know what, Region 4, this, and Region 4, that, they have no comment with Regions 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Well, 10 and finishes yet. They have no comment. And that's why I'm saying, you know, the private sector can never get my respect. The private sector commission can never get my respect. The Guyana Chamber of Commerce can never get my respect. I know they don't need it. You know, I know they don't need it. I'm nobody. But they can never get my respect. Never. Because you're not fair. I could say, good. Or you got a problem in Region 4. I respect that. I respect that. And they should look into your issues when it comes to Region 4. The PPU, PPC, you got a problem in Region 4. The tabulation, mingo, whatever. I respect that. You go do what you got to do, man. You do it. I support you 100. You do what you got to do. Well, if I say I got a problem in Region 1, 2, 3, and the rest, you're going to say, well, oh, yeah, James, I respect it, man. Do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Once you're good, I good. And that's why the lopsidedness in this country, as I'm saying, if I could turn and flip this country out upside down, I'd do it in a flash. I'd do it. I'd flip this country. Because this country here, <laughs> some pigs are more equal than some. Who, who read that little book will know what I'm talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, the recount will over just now. And this is how I envisage it will happen. The PP Civic, they're hoping to all their eggs are in one basket. The numerical count. A numerical count in which they claim that they will win by 15, 17, 18,000 votes. A numerical count that they're saying that um, based on their SOPs, based on whatever, but they're not going to say that their whatever count they come up with is based on fraud. That all their votes, most of their votes are stolen votes. That they not figure they reach, if they reach to 200, 234, 226, 219, how much ever. A lot of those people, there's a lot, they had people to them votes. And Stanley Ming put out some information to show that in a country with 750 people or so, we had a voting population of 640,000. A statistical impossibility. That we grew from since 2012, 2011 to 2020. 100,000 are added to the voters list. A statistical impossibility. Ladies and gentlemen, Guyanese sisters, sisters, sisters and brothers, if you are not willing to admit that the People's Progressive Party civics numbers are incredible, it wholly based, I shouldn't say wholly based, substantially based on fraud, then you're part of the problem. Then you make Mingo look like a saint. <laughs> Varun, <laughs> Varun said the PP Civic make Mingo look like a saint. I don't want to make light of the Mingo situation. I don't want to make light of it because people take that seriously. And I don't want to make a joke about it. That's why I would never like try to be, you know. Funny. But Varun says the PP Civic make min, makes Mingo look like a saint. But I would never make fun of the claims of the PP Civic. They're saying like, Oh, this is their problems and I would never make a joke about it. That's serious for them. I take it seriously. I'm that kind of person. 
I may discredit to say it's not factual, there's some issues with it, but I never make a joke about it. So, we know, and, and Jacob has to understand this, that we're not going to budge on that, you know. We're not going to budge on that. And cost it what it may. <laughs> cost it what it may. Private Sector Commission, EU, whoever, y'all got to issue more statements. Y'all got to issue statements to your pens run out of ink. But we're not accepting no result that gives credence to fraud. Let me just make let, let me just make this point again. We're not gonna accept no result that gives credence to fraud. Whether it's APNU fraud, whether it's PBP fraud, whether it's small party fraud, whether it's whoever fraud. Me, I'm not giving credence to no result that is based in fraud. I am not giving credence to no result. None. No election that is based on fraud. And I don't care who commit the fraud. I don't care who. I'm not giving credence to it. And if you say you love Ghana, and if you say that you, you want to see what's good for your country, I can say this very, very clear, clearly. Don't, don't accept any result based on fraud. If you're saying... Or you're not going to accept a result in which APNU rig, then say you're not going to accept a result if PPP rig. Be bold enough to say that. Be bold enough to say that. You know, and I'm saying that today. To all Guyana. And this is my position. I am not going to accept a result if anybody. I'm not going to accept it. It's shown to have committed fraud or whatever the case. I'm not going to do it. So, we dealt with the PP civics position. Now, Jacob has at hand a number of SORs in which there is attached to it an observation report. Now the observation report would state the number of uh, the number of irregularities, anomalies, and fraud that was committed, allegations of fraud that were committed at these particular polling stations in these boxes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Chicom has to treat with this very seriously. For example. If you find in a box, and this is just an example, you find in a box that all the documents, the statutory documents are missing, all the documents are missing, what do you do? Do you still allow the numbers in that box to go through? What do you do? May I submit that box can't count? That you don't know who vote and who will vote. You don't know. You follow me? GCOM has to be firm on this. If you have, for example, queries that oh, in this box there were three persons who voted, but they were not in the jurisdiction. What do you do with that? We don't know who they vote for. We can't say oh, they vote for PDP or they vote for P AP and UFC. But the fact remains that persons came to this polling station and impersonated the voter, collected a ballot and went and cast a ballot. That's a fraud. What do we do with that information? Do we just take out a vote for both parties or what it could be? PPP, it could be APNU, it could be TCI, it could be Change Guyana, it could be URP, it could be TNM. We take out a vote for everybody. Or do we discredit the entire box, put the whole box aside? Because if three persons migrated 
still got X there. Then you don't know what else happened because the fraud is not just limited to migrants and deaths. It's ballot stuffing. It's a whole heap of things happening there. What does GCOM do? GCOM can't turn a blind eye to it. I won't allow GCOM to turn a blind eye to that. I won't allow it. GCOM has to invalidate that box. See if the box got 200 for AP and EMC, one for TCI, one for TNM, three for PPP, then the whole box has to go. Because it's tainted. And that's why I'm saying, if you find one, I'm like Anil. I don't say if you any fraud, you find we she is the entire process. And we have uncovered hundreds, thousands of instances of fraud. We didn't know this when we March 2nd, you running up and down, getting moved to vote. You know when the people say we're going to try their thing in this, they, they host strong holes and whatever you know about that. You ain't know it's all this going on. This magnitude. They have to start this thing over. This whole election has to be nullified. And I'm saying, if APNU FC had uh, win under these circumstances, they said, no. Yeah, I got to do it back, sorry. And the people within PNC and AAP and EFC know James Bond is for us. So. I want person. I don't criticize my party outside of it. You would never hear me saying a bad word, a single bad word about my party. Never outside. Inside, I would give advice. I would say this. I would say that. I'm that kind of person. I don't bring me, me. I don't hear my and wash my dirty linen in the public. Never. So, ladies and gentlemen, GCOM, Mr. Harmon has written to GCOM, I think, five letters. How do you treat with this? Well, Mr. CEO, Mr. Lowenfield, Commissioners, the chairman of GCOM, they got get people answers now. Because I ain't taking me, me talking for Tom, Dick, Harry, Jennifer, and John. I'm not speaking for the PNC, I'm not speaking for GYSM, I'm not speaking for AP and UFC. I'm speaking for I said, but me, I ain't taking no fraud. I ain't taking it can't choke me me and I say a phrase you can't piss on me and tell me rain falling so you can't tell me oh, oh we know the fraud happened the commissioner police already confirmed or warned something people out the jurisdiction and still vote you can't tell me no oh you're going to take away a one vote or take away a two vote you know who the vote the whole box got to go the whole box got to go. The whole election got to go. Start over. So ladies and gentlemen, as we wind down these coming days, I, I tell people, you know what people ask me, I said, I don't check, I don't check on numbers and check on this no more, you know, I done with that. I already from the big, from a particular point when we start getting into the recount and start doing our investigations and start seeing things and understanding certain things yeah my is a small fish mean up there for know everything that is going on me and him just to sing i mean him president green joe or joseph harmon or barrett jack theory finally me no mean up there i'm not up there i is a small fish all I know is, at the end of the day, I want to see a process in which you don't get an advantage on me and I don't get an advantage on you. We start off at square one and we move forward. That is all I'm interested in. And we have to find a way at the end of this process to admit 
A lot of people gotta admit to themselves, you know. You check my Facebook, my motto is always to be to thine, to thine own self be true. I don't lie to myself. If I wake up and I see me booby in my eye, I say yes, I got booby in my eye. Or if I see yes, my belly looking big, I say yes. I don't say oh shucks, I got six pack or a one pack. I said James, you better I don't lie to myself. I'm not delusional. To my own self be true. That has always been my motto. It's true to myself. And I want to say thanks to my father, Reverend Leslie Bond, to my mom, Grace June Bond, who instilled in me certain principles to be outspoken, to be truthful, to be honest, to respect yourself. I don't lie to myself. I want to say happy birthday to Minister Amn Ali, our party's general secretary. Today is her birthday. She's 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 about six, she's 16 years old today. So feel free to wish her happy birthday as well. But just as an aside. So I would not lie to myself. I would not lie to the Guyanese people. I call it how I see it. That's how I am. I call it how I see it. I know you don't like me because I call it how I see it. But I couldn't care less. I could not care less. If you don't like what I say, when I say how I say it, that is your problem. It don't affect me. I call it how I say it. I'm saying at this moment, if you take what the PP Civic say, the whole election should go over. If you take what AP and UFC say, the whole election should go over. If you take what both PPP say and AP and UFC, of course, the whole election is going to go over. That is my position. That is absolutely my position. And it is one that is grounded in logic. Grounded. So, I am not going to take up much more of your time. I'm so happy that a lot of people are so engaged with the process. You know, so happy that a lot of guys are still with it. You know, so I know this is going to be over soon. You know, one of the favorite lines of uh, one of my favorite movies, Matrix, is everything that has a beginning has an end. That's how it is. So let's not forget that, that this will soon come to an end and uh, we'll be back to our normal lives. I know I see the country more relaxed now in terms of. Um, I think there'll be no new COVID cases in a couple of days. I see persons are going about their daily lives. The extension goes up to June, I think it's 17th. You know, some Guyanese have been able to come in the country and that kind of thing. I hope we return to normalcy.